Cougar Pepsi, Cougar Pepsi. That was different. Good thing I'm saying this out loud so that's <laughs> the last broadcast. The last broadcast is a horror slash faux documentary movie from 1998. It's usually remembered as being the bridge between Cannibal Holocaust and Blair Witch Project. Both films have characters running around searching for a vague plot thread in the woods because you don't need a permit, and they're both presented as real instead of fiction. The plot is pretty simple. The tambourine player from Brian Jonestown Massacre and Otis from Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer are two local TV hosts, and their show is failing, so they have this last ditch effort where they go out into the Pine Barrens and try to find this Jersey Devil, and they bring along with them a sound guy, and a psychic. And then three out of the four of them end up murdered except for the psychic who gets charged and convicted for the murders. And then this documentarian who addresses the camera, this is his take on the whole story and his search for the truth and it's all presented as his actual documentary. You could argue that this movie holds up a little bit better than Blair Witch in that the style of Blair Witch can get tiresome, especially for audiences now. Though I would argue that this movie has a little bit less rewatch value, especially because of the very, very hated ending, which we'll get to in a bit. So starting with the good, I like it when movies will reuse footage later on in the movie and it'll have a different context, it'll have a different meaning. I also like the very creepy horror music, and this is like actual horror music where it's just like static and drones and just strange guttural sounds. Of course there's the whole is this real factor which may actually outshine the movie, but that's always a plus. And of course it borrows at least a little bit of inspiration from Cannibal Holocaust, but it takes it to a different place. For some reason in particular the shots of the empty dirt roads was really irking me and giving me a sense of uneasiness. I think that's because there was that foreboding feeling of like, we're gonna see something happen on that road at the end of the movie. And for good measure, this movie holds the prestigious honor of being the first digitally shot movie to be screened at a major festival, and it was all shot and edited on consumer-grade equipment for $900. That's staggering. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the discussion and something I have to address is the ending, which, as I mentioned before, is very not well liked. So knowing full well that pretty much everybody likes this movie up until the last 10 or 15 minutes, uh, I tried to think of the stupidest possible ending I could, and I was partially right. I thought he was gonna get to the woods and then become the murderer, but unwillingly. Like he somehow becomes an embodiment of uh, media and people's obsession with small town murders, and then he just literally becomes this thing and unbeknownst to him, he becomes the murderer. But now it's just kind of like, nah, he's the murderer. He, he's the guy all along. And in fact, I think that would have been the logical conclusion to the sort of thesis that the movie was building up to, which is that like the media doesn't care and they don't really do research and neither does law enforcement. They're kind of all just swept up in the sensationalism of it all. And here's this guy trying to uncover the truth. That would have been a cool ending. But then it just kind of leaves a bunch more unanswered questions, logistical things. Who gave him this lost footage to rifle through? Why did he hire someone to go through the footage knowing that they were probably just going to find an image of his face that would incriminate him? How did he know where to look for the people in the woods in order to murder them? What's his motivation? And why would he make a documentary for the public to see if it's just going to tie him in with the murders? But I guess you can kind of explain some of this away with, he's crazy! So yeah, the ending just kind of comes out of nowhere in a bad way and unfortunately leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. It's really hard with thrillers if the ending doesn't really hit you in a good way, like, uh, you know, maybe this was going for like a thin blue line kind of thing here, then uh, it's going to turn a lot of people off and they're just going to remember the crappy ending, unfortunately. But everything leading up to that is pretty good, and I don't hate the ending that much. Sometimes it's better to just go with an ambiguous ending, like Blair Witch did, or do like the blow-up ending, where it's like, the more this person obsesses over this thing, they start to question whether or not it's actually even happening. So all in all, it's a valiant effort. It probably would have been better remembered were it not for the ending. Good job, fellas. But, uh, 
I can't really give it a strong recommendation. I would give it a very mild eh, recommendation if you like true crime stuff or uh, if you want to wet your whistle with something similar to Blair Witch. Um, but it's really kind of for completists only. And you would have to have a lot of time in your hands and nothing going on in your life if you're going to sit and pontificate about this. Stay sexy.